of Ibiza, but basically this is article I saw a mixed mag that looked really interesting. Um, has anyone been to Ibiza? I haven't been. I would love to go one day just to kind of say that I've been there. The fact that I went to Robert Johnson, the fact that I'm going to go to um, oh, what's that Pl- club in Dusseldorf? Shit, I forgot the name. Oh, sorry, Munich. There's a club in Munich I want to go to too. I want to do a big club tour one day. Um, I've already been to Robert Johnson, like I mentioned. I want to go to a few others and just go and visit them and see what they like. Um, just for my own kind of curiosity. I think it's really important. Like, you know, Concrete in Paris is closing. Um, a few other legendary clubs around the world are closing. I want to go to that um, club in Tbilisi in Georgia that's been at the forefront of the um, of the movement, of the LGBTQ movement. And just kind of see what these things are like in real life as opposed to kind of looking at it from the outside in. I think it's really, really important for society in general. Oh, it's been really important for my electronic musical journey in in new, uh, overall. But this article, anyway, going back to the article with Fatboy Slim. Um, I'm sure he's spearheading his project. But anyway, it says that Fatboy Slim and Julian Temple silent movie <clears throat> about a beef is an intervention for the island. Um, the article says the following is on Mixmag. Teaming up with Fatboy Slim, acclaimed director Julian Temple has brought Ibiza's history to film with Ibiza's silent movie. With Cook acting as musical director, the soundtrack features EDM with jazz, piano and bizarre techno laden WW2, a new World War II sequence. Pierced by the sound of planes and littered with warnings about tourism, the film lays out the often ignored history of the island, dispelling rumours and shrouding it in myths at the same time. Expect Cook classics. Um, Alfred Futures and the odd cameo from Bez. Here, Temple discusses the soundtrack and challenges of filming that beef and the impact of VIP culture on the island. Um, at the start of this film, there's a clip of a rowdy Ryanair flight. Why was it important to, that to, to set a tone? I think one of the themes of the film is how tourism can achieve a kind of overkill situation, particularly on small islands like Ibiza. There are a large number of flights arriving on that island. To me, that's the irony of a condition of what is really still a very beautiful place you know that there are wild untouched areas particularly in the north but they are flown over by thousands of people for places in the summer season long so that the kind of travel okay cool um i guess the travel tourism for electronic things is interesting right going back to the whole berlin thing which i mentioned ad nauseum on here again excuse but hey it's my podcast say what i want um the tourism thing is interesting because with berlin you get the sense that you know whenever you go on the ryanair flight to berlin for me from my own personal experience when you look around the flight you see tons of people who obviously maybe you know going there for business or who are native and going back to visit their family but you do see a lot of people especially during the summer or during the winter months when people are going to go party that are going there to have a good time right they all kind of you know they're probably in the same sort of age range that you are they maybe have the same sort of level of interest but you never get the feeling that when you're in berlin that um it's overcrowded or that it's um getting a bit too much it's getting a bit overrun i guess maybe because it's a bit more sparse it's a bit more spread out it's a bigger it's a bit of you know it's bigger square footage um or area wise than i'd be for in general but i never get the over i never get the feeling it's over over saturation of it really if anything when you're in berlin you might feel as if there's a lot of expats there right which is different I think this is specifically talking about travel tourism, but there might be a lot of expats in Berlin where you meet people who have maybe only just moved there, have been there maybe a couple of months and just kind of finding their feet. But you don't really feel as if like, you know, there's tons of people there and there's not a lot of native people that have been living. Or let's say people that have been there for more than 10 years, you you meet them all the time in Berlin. It's not like an uncommon thing. Um, I wonder how they're able to balance that. I guess maybe, again, the plethora of clubs, the fact that most of the clubs stay open, right? There are a huge number of clubs that have closed over the years, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, all the big legendary staple ones that we know of, right? Um, CC Force, Ohm, um, Kit Kat, Bergheim, um um i don't know that 88 one that kind of like you know rock one i forgot what i was called that one there prince lausberg there's uh, prince lausberg there's loads of clubs in berlin that are still open that are around now so maybe that kind of goes to and i guess i'd be for the consistently or continually keep closing um season in season out so maybe keep you have to keep keeping up with it people are coming in um the, the laws are getting stringent i think with every new mayor they have a different kind of idea of what the island should look like and what they're trying to promote they all kind of pr- trying to put their mark on it politically and it kind of devoids into this weird place anyway it continues here would you say the impact of tourism has made a pro- point of the film um the the director says the following you know the end of the film is saying that where is i be for now it's almost like the film is a guide i hope to clubbers who go there i just like them to understand that there is an incredible mixture of elements that make this island so individual and unique that's definitely a place worth saving and not dis- disrespecting, which over tourism can do if you don't expect the place. I think it's an ir- intervention. The film is a kind of warning to Ibiza and everyone who loves Ibiza that it does not need to look at the court. It, it does have to look at the course and they set uh, on and listen to places like Barcelona. 
um, where there have been huge dem demonstrations last year. If places are going to remain individual um, and have such a strong identity and spirit as somewhere like Ibiza, otherwise it can be all washed away in a stir of sameness and that would be a terrible thing. But yeah, but because even with the negativity around Ibiza, you still see a, so, you you know, most if not all electronic DJs that everyone knows and loves goes to play there. Even someone like my, even someone that I adore or some me and my friends kind of absolutely adore the ground he walks on Dixon, somebody who's been very adamant and very um, pacific about you know, not one in. I remember an interview he did with Red Bull actually when he was a girl. He answered, he said, Oh, he was very adamant that he wouldn't take her out B for a residency, right? He'd only take it under certain conditions. And obviously, the conditions that he'd done were what you see now, right? His Moderna parties where he's basically created this kind of all encompassing digital experience in you know, a sort of like weird AR. He collaborated with, um, uh, what sort of um, what, do you, what do you call it um, augmented reality sort of stuff you collaborated with Matthew Williams from the leaks so you can see like he definitely wanted to have like his uh, the whole autonomy of the party and to really curate it from the front to the back um, but you see even someone like Dixon who's very picky about the way he plays or where he plays he's even decided to go to Ibiza Ibiza seems to be the one this kind of like um, ground where everyone seems to meet up right it's sort of like in streetwear fashion everyone seems to kind of congregate around Paris Fashion Week nowadays right even Bobby Hundred, somebody who I think back in the day was very much against the whole fashion movement of streetwear right somebody who probably wouldn't want to be seen dead with some of the people that he's having to frolic with around Paris is having to promote his book in Paris right? which I guess is a, a marker of how far streetwear has progressed where you know the blur, lines are blurred so Bobby Hundred's being in Paris doesn't really look that weird but Paris for streetwear fashion is probably equivalent to IB for electronic music people so and I hear a lot of industry people go there a lot of agents a lot of managers go there on holiday or to go support their clients and just get end up getting wrecked over there so it's a kind of all-encompassing project but um yeah I, I don't know how they're going to be able to draw it back I think it's probably the horses have long gone and long bolted out of the stable being able to pull that one back is going to be an effort that was going to require some you know some intervention from the government or from you know people far 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 above um, the people making this film but i guess like you said like um like i like i think i read in the book actually i just finished now this book about the the narco traffickers in galicia right um really a lot of the a lot of the movement it kind of tallies kind of the sort of like downfall of the galician uh narco traffickers who first started with tobacco and then started to get into cocaine and essentially the their downfall was initially started by the local residents right being outraged that some of their children or some of their kids from the local community were succumbing to you know this incredibly pure cocaine coming across from colombia um that was you know being sold you know for pennies right because there's so much of it on the on that little region of spain <clears throat> that some of the kids were developing drug drug um uh, drug addictions and some of them eventually died so some of the local parents or some of the local moms specifically banded together and decided to demonstrate uh, in order to kind of enact some change the police took notice investigated and then we got to a position where most of the police kind of wiped away or looked up some of the big players so <clears throat> a lot of that change came from these mothers kind of taking a stand so sometimes even though i can get a bit you know pessimistic about these kind of things i think what's one person's film gonna do i think as this book proved like you can make quite a big difference if you kind of you know take a stand with something have some evidence to back it up <clears throat> have people supporting you and you never know what can happen from that really isn't it that that, that up, highs up could probably take notes of it um let's scroll down and see the trailer here um <clears throat> the silent movie or about Bifa. put it up on the screen that, that screen that screen grab looks mad isn't it <laughs> it's what it looks like it's a silent movie, so is it actually silent or oh, not? Okay, I think it's just like what, just people a silent movie. I wonder what I mean. So let's just watch it. We've got images of women doing weird sun dances. I think so. There's a real hippie nature because I'm again. Um, what do you call it? Uh, the brunette is from Spain, and a lot of her parents, friends, or friends go friends or friends go to Ibiza in order to kind of spiritually cleanse themselves. I know there's a big movement with some DJs going to Bali and going on silent retreats, but this looks pretty cool. I'd, I'd really go. I'd go to be honest. I wouldn't be mad at this. People on the fishing boats, people making crystals or dancing. White people love sitting on sand and meditating and shit. Videos of uh, animals on the ground, people lying in little lagoons and shit. Here we go, man. It looks pretty cool, though, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Not as one of these parts. Just actually go and actually rave, properly rave, will be quite cool to go and see. But again, you know, everyone dancing, topless people. Dancing girls, people DJing. Imagine DJing it, that'd be so fun, isn't it? People just literally out there just get fucked and you're just dancing. They don't really care what you play. Pacho Ibiza. Space mask on. 
it looks pretty cool to be as in the movie i wonder if they're gonna screen it all over the uk too a lot of people are already over there from the uk properly so it won't happen but i would love to see it that's pretty cool isn't it i used to watch wild wild country it reminds me a lot of wild wild country really doesn't it like you know kind of a cult really but not really um and it's, I just find it interesting how the government are battling with it. It's just like, you know, the, you must know the only reason people are coming to Ibiza is to party and get loose, right? But they just, I don't know. I guess maybe the, I don't know. I wonder I wonder why there isn't more of a cooperation between the nightlife or the electronic music party community and the local government. I wonder why, because essentially I've not heard of anyone, unless you meet somebody who's a native of Spain, right, who's from Spain, you won't hear of anyone else who's actually gone to IB for just to solely relax. Or unless your parents are from the old school hippie era or who, you know, if your parents are the same age as like, you know, the guy that organizes Glastonbury that came from that kind of scene. I'd imagine they were probably OGs of, of, of IB for, right? They probably went there back in the day when it was really awesome. Um, or it was untouched, right? But I think for now, everyone's going there to get fucked up, really. And I wonder why they're not really just being a bit more lax with it. But anyway, I guess they probably have their reasons.